banks as well as in the non financial industry what is this enterprise risk management all about how is it different from the typical risk management uh, approaches that uh, have been followed in the various organizations till date that is what we are typically uh, going to take up in this session just as a quick introduction every company no matter what business it is into it has to develop effective processes for different kinds of risks nothing questioned in that right every risk it could be a market risk it could be a credit risk it could be an operation risk it could be a strategic risk whatever is the kind of risk to address each of those significant risks the company is facing it has to come out with effective processes to mitigate them to handle them but what we are simply saying is not in isolation there can be a lot of interdependencies between each of the risks i can't segregate exactly what is a market risk and a credit risk there could be some level of overlap between these that is where the real danger comes up when we are trying to one categorize the risk saying that this is a market risk now what happens is when i try to categorize it i will assign a manager to it to handle it the so the manager who is handling it he tries to look at it purely from a market risk perspective but there could be an element of credit risk inside it which means the reality is saying that the various risks that the company is facing they are not isolated from each other they have lot of interdependencies and that is where the enterprise risk management is coming into picture i should look at mechanisms of reducing the risk but not in isolation the moment i start looking at the risk in isolation by giving a separate name to it we see that the entire process becomes inefficient we develop a silo based approach individualized isolated kind of an approach which comes out to be inefficient and in today's world it can even become dangerous to the firm that is what is enterprise risk management targeting i should be able to do the management of my risks effectively i need to identify all my risks come out with mechanisms in terms of handling each of these risks but at the same time not look at them in isolation because what we really see is the risks are heavily dynamic they keep changing at one point i may say i may see that this particular risk does not exist or it has a very small impact but within no time that itself could lead to a drastic loss so we need to constantly monitor the risk not just in isolation but also understand the interdependency that is present between the risk and that is where the erm suggest look at the integrated approach to manage the risk sometimes it is even called as a portfolio approach to manage the risk right don't look at them as silos that is what is the simple point erm is talking about because in the real world even today yes lot of things have come into the market to measure do you have a lot of tools to measure different kinds of risk you have a lot of tools to identify different kinds of risk but in isolation yes for market is there's a lot of information available lot of tools available credit risk yes operations risk yes even today all of them are treated separately and that is where the integration is required just for example today every company is having a few credit experts to handle the default related risk mortgage specialists are there to handle prepayment risk so the each thing is becoming a specialized specialty center there is nothing wrong in having it but the communication between the departments is equally required the traders are the guys who take care of market risk 
actually is used to take care of the liability, mortality and other insurance risks. Every company has an audit team which takes care of the operations risk and probably the senior management look at the business risk. This is what all of you might agree. Every firm has all these specialists. If I look at a finance firm, I would see specialists in all these areas who are handling each of their uh, uh, each of their uh, department, each of the risks in isolation. But to what extent communication exists between them is creating a differentiator, is acting as a differentiator in the growth of the organization. If you handle them in isolation, what is observed is a suboptimal performance of the company. And because we would be overlooking the correlations, the interdependencies that could present between the various risks. And there is even a possibility of a portfolio effect, diversification benefit. Yes, there is, a, uh, there is a, a credit manager who is handling the credit risk, who has come out with mechanisms for handling the credit risk. And at the same time, there is a, a market risk manager who is uh, handling the market risk. Now, these two are handled in isolation. There is a cost that is incurred here. There is a cost that is incurred here. But because of the presence of these two, it might very well be possible. By naturally, they could offer a kind of a portfolio benefit between them. Now, if they are offering a portfolio benefit, why should I have, why should I typically go for incurring too much of cost? By naturally, they are offering as a portfolio, one is lessening the loss of the other. So the portfolio effects, portfolio benefits, I cannot take an advantage of. And in some cases, one plus one is not equal to two. One plus one could become more than two, which means that excess is ignored. In some cases, 1 plus 1 could become less than 2, which means I am not able to take the advantage of the portfolio diversification benefit. And that is what is ERM targeted towards. So just to talk about the ERM function, which every organization has, it or should have, is something which should come out with a firm-wide policies and standards with respect to risk identification, risk measurement, risk mitigation actions, risk monitoring, all the steps of risk management needs to be set with a clearly defined policies and standards. And across the firm, there should be a coordination and implementation of these standards for the across the organization, not for one department or business unit. There should be uniformity in the standards because today what we see is for different risks, we use different kinds of numbers. Probably the market risk team uses value at risk as a tool which measures the risk of their particular department. Whereas uh, a credit risk department may talk in terms of outstanding balance rather than talking in terms of value at risk. Whereas uh, the operations risk department might come out with their own scoring model saying this is a measure of operations risk. But look at it in a simple way. As an organization, what is required? As an organization, the consistency across the different forms of risk is very much required. Overall, what is the amount that I can lose? What is the money that is at risk for me? Right? So, and what is the kind of interdependency that is existing between the risks? If I have a different measure for both of them, probably the information which the senior management is getting as a part of the reporting is purely in bits and pieces, not a big picture. And at the same time, any senior manager in a firm who is getting this particular risk report he should be comfortable in terms of addressing a few simple questions. What are the top 10 risks in my company? What are those critical business objectives which are at risk? Any of my objectives, I am going away from the target. Any of my business objectives, heavily at risk. And do I know what are my key risk indicators? 